As I make this video, I respectfully acknowledge that I'm standing on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation, and I thank them for the use of their lands. And this is the third video in a series where I was given a string, and the goal was to return the first N words of the string. In this case, the, of course, the number of words is four. And I've done that with N0 in the very first video of the series. And when I got some metrics about it using time space x, and the way time space x works is that it takes the left argument, and that's the number of times it executes the right argument, which is a string. And then what it returns is the amount of time and the amount of space, hence time space x. So that's the amount of time and space that uh, the first version took me. And then I did an, an alternate version, which I called n1. And you can see it's quicker, and it takes up less space. And it's important that it takes up less space, because as you get bigger and bigger arguments for s, that space increases quite a bit more and it runs quite a bit slower as it gets bigger. So the, with these small arguments, the quicker you can make it, the less space it takes, the quicker it'll be. And today we're going to take a look at what I did to come up with N2. And just to show you, N2 is, hmm, that looks like it's slower. That's interesting. I'm going to run that one more time because sometimes you just get hitches in the computer. There you go, that's more like it. Um, N2 runs faster and it always takes up less space. There's a, the space part of it is quite consistent, but sometimes you've got something running in the background on a computer and it takes up a little bit more space. But N2 is faster, it takes up less space. So, how did I write N2? Well, starting off with S, which is our string, I wanted to find out all the positions in this string that were blank. And what I want to do is any of those positions that are blank, I'll say equals, so between the quotes here, that's a blank equals S. And there I go. Now I've got, now I've got a, a, a string of ones and zeros, and the ones are all in position where there's blanks. That's great, except this really isn't a verb. It's sort of more just of a statement. So I'm going to make it into a verb. And the way I'm going to make it into a verb is I'm going to make it into a verb called a fork. So, whoops, see a little separation there. So this verb here and this whole thing here is a verb. This right um, indicator is going to pull the S in. And on this left tine of the fork, I've got a blank space. And so the blank space feeds one side of the equals verb, and the other side of the equals verb is going to be my string. And what that means is it's going to compare the blank space to every character in this list, in this string. And whenever it sees a blank, it's going to return a 1. And whenever it sees anything else, it's going to return a 0. So there you go. Same as before, but now this is actually a verb, so it's separate from your noun. So now that I know where, now I know all these positions of ones, it would be great if I had a verb that would actually give me the numbers of those positions. Because if I could find the number of the position, say here, uh, then I could just take all the characters up to that position. Well, we actually do have a verb that does that called indices. And that's what indices look like. Now, if you remember from previous videos, the way I've got this now is this group of three would be a fork, and then this extra verb here would make it a hook. I don't want a hook. I don't want S coming back in and feeding in the other side of this one. I want nothing coming in from this side. I want this whole verb here just to feed into this like there was nothing there, and that's why I'm going to put a thing called a cap here, which is basically a dead verb. It takes the space of a verb, but it doesn't feed anything here, so everything is coming from this side, and that means this string of ones and zeros goes into uh, indices, 
treats it like a monadic verb. And what I get back is a list of the indices of the ones. Remember, it's zero index. So this is zero. And then I've got a one in one position, two, three, four, five, six, like that, and then so on down the, red, the list. So these are all the positions I've got. And now I've pretty much got what I want there, but I'm going to have to pull in somehow. I'm going to have to figure out when I want to get to this index here, which is, say, if I had four, this will be where four comes in. Zero, one, two, three, four. But I don't want this extra one. I want to be back here. So I'm going to have to decrement my right argument out of this group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a verb here that's going to be a cap and then a decrement and then the left argument and in the middle I'm going to do from. So essentially when I put the four out here what's going to happen is this left argument means the four comes in here and it gets processed, decremented, so it becomes three. Take, and then this verb here, this fork here, um, is taking the right argument. So it's going to return this list, and it's going to take the third, because I've got three here, it's going to take the third position here. So zero, one, two, three, that will give me 15. Bingo. So now I know 15 spaces in is all the characters that I want. So having done that, I'm going to create one more fork, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I'm going to take this whole thing and it's going to become my left tine of my fork. And then in the center, I'm going to put take and then on the on the right time, I'm going to put self again. So now I'm taking 15 characters of S. And I get a list of words. So there's my answer. And when I do N2, that's what it looks like. I've got taking S, taking what from S? Well, I'm taking some number of characters out of S. What number of characters? Well, I have to evaluate this whole thing here. And it takes S, what's equal to spaces, the indices of them. And then on this side, it takes four decrements. So it's got three, taking the third index, which is 15. And you get a list of words. Now, I also created another noun called S1 that had 380,000 characters in it. And because the original... Um, S has 38 characters. Essentially, there's 10,000 copies of S1 there. Now, the reason I did this is just to show you what happens if I use bigger arguments. And you'll be able to see that you get a much bigger difference between them. So the spinning beach ball of I'm taking my time, and it took about almost uh, four thousandths of a second to do that a thousand times, which is quick. It also took up a lot of space. Um, let's take a look at N1 now. It's a bit quicker and it takes up less space because we got to the 10 to the minus 6 instead of 10 to the minus 7. So essentially this is about two and a half times bigger. I'm just ballparking there. But now this is where you really start to see the difference with N2 because it's Oh, what would it be, about one-seventh the time of this one? But look, it's even taking a third of the space. So if you were constrained by your space um, on, on what you're trying to do, this um, particular verb is much quicker and takes up less space than the other two. So that's my quickest verb. And I'm going to have one more um, video in the series. And in that video... I'm going to look at what I think is a really elegant way to do this, but it's not the fastest. It's just 
in some ways it's the prettiest. So uh, the last uh, video in this series will be about something I think is kind of pretty, but uh, honestly, it's, it's probably not the most efficient way to do it. The most efficient way to do it is this guy right here. Um, it's the big difference is using the indices. It means I'm not trying to uh, create all these cumulative lists and everything. I'm just taking a list of numbers. I'm only decrementing a single number, and then I'm just taking whatever that number is from the whole string. It's a very quick thing to do. If somebody else comes up with a quicker thing, well, include it in the comments because I'd love to learn about it. Um, but at this point, this is the fastest way and the least space that I've found. So uh, if you find out, find a better one, well, put in the comments and I'll, I may make end up, I end up making two more videos then because uh, I'd, I'd love to find out that there's a, there's, um, there's a faster way, but I haven't found it yet. And uh, I think that's about it for this one.